Coming up on Breeze TV, JMU's new fundraising campaign was announced on the Friday night of homecoming. And the city of Harrisonburg works to improve traffic conditions on Port Republic Road. Plus, we take a look at all the spooktacular events that are taking place in Harrisonburg. This is Breeze TV. Live from the Allison B. Parker Studio in the School of Media Arts and Design at James Madison University, this is Breeze TV. Good afternoon, JMU. I'm Kent Irwin. And I'm Anna Saunders. Thanks for joining us on Breeze TV. The midterm election is just a few days away. Breeze TV's, Ch Breeze TV's Chelsea Church is at JMU's precinct to tell us what to keep in mind on Tuesday. I'm outside the Convocation Center where students who live on campus will be going on Tuesday between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. to submit their ballots. Students who live off campus can check out this graphic provided by the JMU Center of Civic Engagement to find out where their polling location is. I spoke with Anna Canole, a Democracy Fellow at the JMU Center of Civic Engagement, and she tells us what to keep in mind for voting on Tuesday. It's most important for students now to make sure they know where they're going or what time they're voting, especially because we'll have classes that day. So make sure you go online, Department of Elections, to check your polling location or use our graphic and just know what's going to happen as soon as you walk in that door so you have time for it and you feel informed yourself. Voters will need to bring a valid photo ID with them and will be choosing who they want for U.S. Senate and House of Representatives 6th District in addition to new city council and school board members. For more information on these candidates, you can go to jmu.edu slash vote and click on the Election Central tab. Reporting in Harrisonburg for Breeze TV, I'm Chelsea Church. Funerals continue today for the victims of Saturday's mass shooting at a Pittsburgh synagogue. Community members have gathered at the Tree of Life Synagogue to remember those who died. Two brothers, Cecil and David Rosenthal, who were, were two victims they honored. It was the honorary mayor of Squirrel Hill because everybody knew who Cecil was. I've seen David downtown at the Federal Building, you know, being from, you know, working in for the Goodwills in Jenner Forest Service. About 100 players and coaches and staffers were, were with the Pittsburgh Steelers attended the funeral Saturday for the Rosenthal brothers. Their sister, Michelle, was a former employee of the team. Pittsburgh hockey team, the Penguins, also showed support with a moment of silence before Tuesday's game, and by adding the phrase stronger than hate to its logo. As more of the victims were laid to rest, the suspect of the shooting appeared in court Thursday. 46-year-old Robert Bowers was cuffed at the hands and ankles and walked into the Western District of Pennsylvania Federal Court. A federal jury indicted him on 44 federal charges in last week's mass shooting, where 11 people died. He pleaded not guilty to the charges. Most of Bauer's charges are eligible for the death penalty. He's being held at the Butler County Jail without bond. Earlier this week, a man was charged with a felony hit and run after he hit a local college student on the intersection of Martin Luther King Jr. Way and South Main Street. According to the Harrisonburg Police Department, the 21-year-old woman was on the crosswalk using a motorized bird scooter. Witnesses report that the Toyota Camry failed to yield and hit the woman. The driver then failed to stop and kept going east on MLK Jr. Way. The victim was airlifted to UVA Medical Center with serious injuries. Investigators determined the suspect to be Jacinto Perez Lopez, a Harrisonburg man, and charged him with a felony hit and run. About two hours after the crash, police say Lopez turned himself into the police department and was arrested. He is currently being held without bond at the Rockingham County Regional Jail. A Harrisonburg bus driver is in the hospital after a bus crash that occurred at Sunchase Apartments yesterday. Witnesses say that the driver cut across two lanes of traffic, drove into a ditch, and then up a, an embankment into the Sunchase parking lot, where it crashed into two trees and two cars. All six passengers on the bus are reportedly okay, but our very own Conwall Syed was also on the bus, and she is here to tell us what happened. Conwall, we're so glad to see that you're okay, but can you tell us what happened? Of course, Kent. Thanks so much. Um, the event was very scary. It all happened pretty fast. Probably only lasted about 10 to 15 seconds, but it felt like it lasted forever. Um, I didn't sustain any major injuries on my own, but um, I'm hoping that everyone else is okay, and we're all recovering right now, so thanks. Thank you, Conwall. And last we heard, the driver of the bus had been taken to the hospital. 
but nobody sustained any serious injuries. So thank you so much, Conwall, for telling us what happened. Over homecoming weekend, JMU announced a major fundraising campaign called Unleashed, and I was there for the big reveal. Take a look. $200 million. That is the fundraising goal for JMU by June of 2022. This comprehensive campaign, Unleashed, has been in the works in a planning committee for about three years. And on Friday of homecoming, the campaign already raised $124.5 million. This is an opportunity to bring all our alumni together and, and you know, to contribute to what we believe is an unbelievable future for the university. While three big seven-figure donations were made that night, University Provost Heather Coleman stressed the importance of the smaller donations too. Sometimes those small donations make the difference between a student being able to go on an important and meaningful trip and or not being able to. So small donations can mean a great deal to a student. The money will not only go toward building projects, but also to scholarships, research, community outreach, and much more. It's comprehensive. So really the idea is to think about it as a, a campaign designed to funnel giving to all of the different areas in the community, the JMU community. The night of the big reveal was complete with a promo video, purple and gold fireworks, and a Bridgeforth light show that could be seen from the President's Room in D Hall, where invited guests were gathered. It's all about the students, it's all about the programs, and our top priorities of what makes JMU so distinctive. Reporting for Breeze TV in Harrisonburg, I'm Anna Saunders. Thank you. And speaking of homecoming, we have one of the winners of Madison Majesty here with us today. Our very own Breeze TV reporter, but who won through Student Ambassador's dire pace. So, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. Thank you all for having me. So, Madison, Mr. and Ms. Madison, as it used to be called, they made changes and called it Madison Majesty this year. But I noticed you opted to wear the Mr. Madison sash. So, can you tell us sort of your thinking behind that? Right, yeah. So, I personally identify as Mr. Madison. However, they did open it up for everyone to identify as Mr., Miss, Madison Majesty, or MX Madison um, to kind of really include everyone, um, no matter the identification. I think, Jamie, we really pride ourselves on being a community here. So really being inclusive and showing that we support everyone, I think is a really great step to take nowadays um, to really just show everyone that we are such a welcoming community. And do you think that they should completely get rid of the gendering it at all and just call it Madison Majesty? What do you well, think? Well, I kind of like Madison Majesty because it was a little bit more royal. Um, I, I enjoyed the Madison Royal Court title, but I think it could be something to take into consideration, um, just having Madison Majesty be the kind of title um, taking on going on. So typically it's more of a ceremonial role. Would you like to see it become more of like, I guess, an involved role on campus throughout the year? Yeah, I think that'd be interesting. I think that everyone on the Royal Court this year was really involved on campus, recognizable people who really make a large impact. So maybe having more service events to attend or just kind of getting that Royal Court back together to be more active on campus, whether that be again in service roles or just like mentorship roles and things like that. I think that there were so many great people involved that kind of capitalizing on that and really making a larger impact could be something to take into consideration going on, but SGA does a great job with um, the whole process. Mm -hmm. And Kimber Mapley was the co-winner. She opted to wear the Ms. Madison yes. sash, and she talked about how much it meant to her as she said that JMU wasn't her first choice school and that she grew into this school. So what did it mean to you to win this title? Oh, it, it, was, it was just an incredible honor. Um, I think that what's so special about this place is the people um, and to kind of get to represent the student body um, was absolutely incredible. Um, it was just really humbling um, and my family was there and I just love JMU. It wasn't my first choice either, but kind of falling in love with this place and being able to just like take in so much and take in the people and the experiences, it was just a huge honor to kind of uh, get recognized by my peers. It was absolutely incredible. Well, Dyer, thanks so much for being here and congratulations. Yeah, thank you all so much. Of course. So coming up on Breeze TV, the city of Harrisonburg works to improve traffic on Port Republic Road. Plus, there's a new addition to the JMU Alumni Center. All up next on Breeze TV. This is Breeze TV. At the end of October marks the end of JMU's Red Flag Campaign and the end of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. JMU's The Well hosted a final open mic night at TDU. The Red Flag Campaign is a nationwide initiative across college campuses that emphasizes a bystander in intervention strategy 
to prevent and address unhealthy relationships. At open mic night, students sang, gave speeches, and read poetry to express their feelings and experiences. For open mic night, we really wanted to provide a space for students or survivors to just have a, have a voice and give themselves an opportunity to share their experiences and shed light on their opinions on this really important topic. If you or someone you know is looking for help with sexual assault or domestic violence, there are several resources available. The Collins Center, located in Harrisonburg, has a 24-7 hotline, and JMU's Campus Assault Response, also known as CARE, has a 24-7 student hotline as well. All information can be found on the University Health Center's website. In addition, the CARE hotline is on the back of all Jack cards. With cold weather approaching, audiences flock to the movie theaters across the U.S. Three new films open in wide release this weekend. The Nutcracker in the Four Realms is a new take on Chavosky's beloved Christmas ballet. Plus, Nobody's Fool, a Tyler Perry comedy starring Tiffany Haddish. Haddish plays an ex-con trying to help her sister, played by Chica Sumter. And Bohemian Rhapsody is ready to rock in theaters. The film portrays the late, great Freddie Mercury in the musical biopic of the rock band Queen. Bohemian Rhapsody's tracking to debut with $35 million or more, easily enough to top the box office. Starbucks is planning to open 2,100 new stores globally next year. The company laid out the plan in its fourth quarter earnings release on Thursday. The company added about 600 new stores in the most recent quarter and has over 29,300 restaurants overall. Along with the new stores, they have expanded their portfolio of cold drinks to include low sugar iced teas and cold brew coffees. They also expanded a happy hour promotion to include drinks beyond just frappuccinos and limited discounts to customers who register online and use the Starbucks app. Shares of the company jumped up 9% in response to the positive earnings report. This Madison College sign used to be on the corner of Port Republic Road and Bluestone Drive, but can now be found on East Campus. In 1977, the Madison College sign was covered up by a brass placard that said James Madison University. After the university took off the brass this summer, they decided to keep the Madison College memory alive. When we were replacing the signs uh, this summer, we took the brass off and we saw that it still said Madison College, and uh, we thought it'd be a great idea to have it here at the Alumni Center, so when um, students or alumni from that era came back, it would just be a fun reminder of their time here at Madison College. Wyatt says this is the last standing Madison College sign. It can now be seen in front of the Alumni Center. For the, fir for the first time, the Food and Drug Administration has given its approval for a cannabis-based medication that will be available in all 50 states. Epiolex, an oral solution, is officially approved for treating people with two types of epileptic sy syndromes. Drive syndrome, a rare s genetic dysfunction of the brain that begins in the first year of life, and Lennox, Gasto syndrome, a form of epilepsy that usually emerges between ages three and five. The medication was recommended for approval in April and approved by the FDA in June. In September, the DOJ and the DEA classified it as a S Schedule V substance, clearing the drug for it to be legally prescribed by doctors in the U.S. GW Pharmaceuticals says the average list price of Epidolex is $32,500 a year, and most insurance plans will cover the drug. Traffic in Harrisonburg is about to become a bit more bearable. At the intersection of South Main Street and Port Republic Road, they're getting some changes. Breeze TV's Conwall Syed tells us more. The city of Harrisonburg is looking to improve the flow of traffic here at the South Main Street and Port Republic Road intersection. As you can see behind me, the flow of traffic is not as bad. But during the peak hours of 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock, there's a heavier flow of traffic and much more congestion. The Harrisonburg City Public Works Department is looking to extend the left turn lane at the intersection, which will decrease congestion and aid safety concerns. We spoke with Assistant Public Works Director Tom Hartman to see what the city's plans are to get ready for the project that is going to be completed next year. They like the idea. They, they think improving that safety is, is going to be an important thing. Um, but overall, I, I think we, we all agree it's going to be a good project for the city to get implemented. Um, to help improve a, a, a very busy corridor and busy intersection within the city. The city budgets to be about $500,000 for the project and is expected to be completed in spring 2019. Reporting for Breeze TV in Harrisonburg, I'm Conwell Syed. 
Coming up next, Dalen has sports for us. What's the update, Dalen? We're going to take a look at how well JMU did this week in the Berg. And we have a live interview with Sean McKenna of JMU Men's Soccer. All of that and more coming up on the Breeze TV Sports Wrap. This is Breeze TV. Welcome to the Breeze TV Sports Wrap. I'm Dalen Burgess. Last Saturday, fans and alumni celebrated homecoming weekend as the third-ranked Dukes clashed with the Seawolves of Stony Brook at Bridge Fourth Stadium. Here is head coach Prior and Mike Houston watching their respective teams warm up. Less than two minutes in the first quarter, the Dukes go up 7-0 as JMU quarterback Ben DiNucci connects with wide receiver Kendall Dean for a 15-yard touchdown. But Stony Brook strikes back in the second quarter with a 30-yard touchdown run from Donald Leontine to tie the game. Early in the fourth, Tyler Gray's 24-yard field goal was the difference as the Dukes go on to win 13-10. On Sunday, JMU Women's Soccer looked to clinch the CAA regular season title against the College of Charleston. In the 12th minute, Ginger Dill puts the ball on frame and Stephanie Hendry scores off the rebound to put the Dukes up 1-0. But four minutes later, Charleston responds with a beautiful header from Romero Barreto to tie the game at one apiece. Then in the 80th minute, Haley Crawford scores the game-winning goal as the Dukes go on to win 2-1 and will host the CAA tournament. The 2-1-5 Los Angeles Lakers hosted the Dallas Mavericks Wednesday night. LeBron James came in clutch for the Lakers as he led the team in scoring with 29 points. He had some help from Lonzo Ball, who knocked down the three, putting the Lakers up 16 in the third. The Mavericks kept it close though, as some late game heroics from Luka Doncic erased the Lakers lead in the closing seconds. James gets fouled on the game winning layup attempt. James was able to knock down just one free throw, which proved to be enough as the Lakers survive 114 to 113. Another star in the NBA who made a big night was Minnesota Timberwolves' Derrick Rose. Rose had a career night, dropping 50 points against the Utah Jazz. Rose scored 34 points in the second half and was able to hit some key shots down the stretch. In the closing seconds, Rose blocked a potential game-winning three-pointer from Dante Exum, allowing the Timberwolves to escape with a 128-125 to win. University of Maryland football coach DJ Durkin has been fired just one day after being reinstated. Durkin had been on administrative leave since August after an incident resulting in the death of one of his players. Offensive coordinator Matt Canada will stand in as interim head coach. The Terrapins are currently 5-3 on the season and will take Big Ten rival Michigan State this Saturday. And welcome back to the Breeze TV Sports Wrap. I'm Dalen Burgess, and today I am joined by Sean McKenna of JMU Men's Soccer. Sean, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. On Tuesday, JMU Men's Soccer went back-to-back -back as the CAA regular season champions. Describe this feeling and what does this accomplishment mean to the team? Yeah, obviously it's a great accomplishment. Um, we've been looking forward to this all season, and being back-to-back -back champions is a humbling experience. Um, but. Honestly, we're at the forefront of our mind right now is the CAA tournament and bringing home a ring back to Harrisonburg. Under first year coach Paul Sosinski, describe the chemistry between the coaches and the players. Yeah, Paul was the assistant in the past couple of years. He knows the program really well and he hired a great staff coming in. So the chemistry between us is great. They bring a positive atmosphere to training every day and it radiates to the team. What is the atmosphere in the locker room like on game days? Yeah, the guys are great. Um, the atmosphere is very lively, very positive. Um, obviously, every guy has their own routine getting ready for the game. And, but overall, just a fun atmosphere. I'm great to be a part of it. Who are some unsung heroes that are a part of the, your team's success? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to give some credit to um, Chris Smith and our athletic training staff. They're some of the hardest working people I've ever met, whether it's from taping ankles, getting guys ready um, for the game or getting back from rehab. They're there every day with a positive smile on their face, and I just can't thank them enough for everything they do. That's good that you were able to bring in somebody that, you know, the fans don't know about and yeah. showing how important they are to the team. So that's awesome to hear. Since you're the number one seed, you've earned a bye week. Moving forward, how is the team preparing for the semifinals on November 9th? Yeah, it's a great accomplishment to have the bye week and be the number one seed. Um, 
We've had a full week of training to get ready for uh, this weekend and fine tune some things that we've wanted to work on. But um, as a player, you just want to play and get ready for the tournament. But yeah, again, our main focus is on semifinals this Friday. This season, you guys are 11, four and two. What has been the major key to your team's success? Uh, definitely, I think the depth of the program. This is probably one of the deepest teams I've ever been a part of. Um, every guy on the roster has played a crucial role in our team's success. And I believe we've had six guys with um, their first goals for JMU, so it just shows that we're able to notch points from different parts of the game. Thanks for your time, Sean. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. at the Halloween festivities in Harrisburg. All of these spooky events coming up next on Breeze TV. This is Breeze TV. Leading up to Halloween, JMU fraternity and sorority life hosted trick-or-treating on Greek Row. Breeze TV's Peyton Kennedy reports on the family fun and festivities. Children, students, and parents alike dressed in their best Halloween costumes this October 25th for JMU's trick-or-treating on Greek Row. The Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life coordinated this event and said they aim to unite the campus and surrounding Harrisonburg community with a spooky, fun-filled afternoon. Fraternities and sororities were paired and lined up along the row to distribute candy to the trick-or-treaters. They also had game and craft tables for the kids to use while listening to some popular and family-friendly music of the holiday. All of the students are very sweet and they're very excited to interact with the kids and interact with our child. So it's, and it's, the it's and, and the crafts and the candy and it's just sweet that everyone is able to give back to the community. Some members of Greek Life noted they enjoyed spending time with the people of their community and taking a break from the stress of school to enjoy some sweet treats. Reporting for Breeze TV this Halloween weekend, I'm Peyton Kennedy. Fear Forest is a local Halloween attraction that runs from Thursday to Saturday every October. Breeze TV's Olivia Howell gives us a closer look at the people who put the fear in Fear Forest. Harrisonburg native Natasha Pence lives a double life. Well, by day, the mother of two is a pharmacy technician, but by night, she transforms into a character for the fright crew at Fear Forest. When you can dress up in a character, you become a completely different person. When you get down in the woods, it's a, it's a different world. You, it doesn't matter anymore whether or not you knew who put that makeup on and went in there. They're a different person when they are in there. Pence has been a crew member since her family opened Fear Forest 13 years ago. Over the years, the business has grown in size and popularity, but it remains a family affair. My father-in-law used to run a tractor, and my brother-in-law would be down there running tractors, and obviously my husband does it. My stepdaughter, she loves to come down there every night and watch. Scaring comes naturally to her. Every night, she heads to the forest like an actress gearing up for their next performance. I love to see people scared. <laughs> to hear them scream. <laughs> I don't want to say that I like to see them have anxiety attacks, but I'd like to know that I really scared them. Hundreds of attendees run out of the woods in terror after Pence and her crew members give them the fright of their lives. They jump out at you all over, but it's a very good Halloween treat. It's a Halloween treat performed so well, you'll forget they're just regular people. While all of this may be scary for some, for the Fear Force crew, it's just another day in the office. Reporting for Breeze TV in Harrisonburg, I'm Olivia Houck. Halloween in round two starts today, and with festivities in full spirit, police are taking extra precaution to make sure everyone is staying safe. There will be an increase in patrols going into the extended Halloween weekend, and if you have guests visiting, there are a few things police recommend you pay extra attention to. It's one of those kind of holidays where everybody gets excited about want to have a little fun in costumes and all that. But our big thing is just encouraging people to go about it safely. Um, of course, the thing about driving, don't drive or have a designated driver. You have Uber and you have the bus system. There's a lot of opportunities uh, to not get behind the wheel. So that's the number one thing is just thinking about safety. If you're walking, uh, in a, stay in a group. Well, we've got the extended Halloween weekend this weekend, but Tuesday, we've got election night, and we're doing it on Breeze TV this year. 
Yep, so we will be here analyzing what's going on starting at 8.30 p.m. And we will also have people, our reporters, Sydney Jacksteimer and Caitlin Merriman will be live at the watch party in Madison Union Ballroom. So you can catch us there, watch us on Facebook or on Campus Cable. Have a good day, everyone. That's it for us on Breeze TV.